All right, so today we're diving deep into the world of Frank Auerbach. Oh, an excellent choice. Yeah, a British art icon recently passed away. Yeah. In his paintings, they're just extraordinary, really. Unlike anything I've ever seen. Thick layers, <laughs> textured, almost like he sculpted the paint onto the canvas. Right. Powerful, intense, sometimes even a little unsettling, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. But he achieved incredible recognition in the art world, despite that, you know? Yeah, that somber, emotionally heavy style. Exactly. So how did this guy whose life was marked by tragedy become so celebrated? Yeah, it's a great question. Let's unpack it. Okay. So Auerbach, his story begins in 1931. Berlin, right. Jewish parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can imagine his childhood overshadowed by, you know, what was happening in Germany. At the time. of Nazi Germany, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in 1939, his parents, they made this incredibly tough decision. Oh, I can't even imagine. To send him to London on a kinder transport. Right. One of those rescue missions. Saving thousands of Jewish children. Thousands, yeah. Just seven years old, mm -hmm. separated from his family, uh -huh. sent to a foreign country with an uncertain future. Really rough. <laughs> yeah, and tragically, his parents, Max and Charlotte, mm -hmm. they were later murdered at Auschwitz. Oh, gosh. So he became an orphan in a world that had just been completely turned upside down. Yeah, devastating. It makes sense that art became his refuge, a way to deal with all that grief and trauma. Makes total sense. His early works, they depict post-Blitz London. Right. And they're painted in these, you know, somber browns and grays. Yeah. Capturing the city's reconstruction, this mix of loss and, you know, this tentative hope. Yeah, a glimmer of hope, but always that weight of what had happened. Exactly. Yeah. The kinder transport. What an act of humanity amidst unimaginable darkness. It's hard to fathom. Thousands of families faced with this impossible choice. I know. Sending their children away into the hands of strangers. Just hoping for safety. A sliver of hope. Can you imagine the emotional toll? I mean, on both the parents, the children. Just heartbreak. For those who survived this experience, it left an indelible mark. It would change you forever. Absolutely. Separation, loss, the constant fear for their loved ones. And not knowing. It shaped their entire lives. And in Auerbach's case, you know, yeah. it's almost as if the weight of history is embedded in the texture of his paintings. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the texture is unlike anything else. You can't talk about Auerbach without talking about his technique. Right. It's so central to his work. It is. It's yeah. what makes his work so unique, recognizable. Yeah. He wasn't interested in those smooth, polished surfaces of you know traditional portraiture no he wanted to dig deeper he did he piled on paint layer upon layer creating these incredible textures incredibly textured surfaces uh -huh. yeah he called it giving the paint a history that's a great way to put it and when you look at his canvases you can feel the energy the struggle the struggle yeah the physicality of it all yes. it's visceral it's raw undeniably powerful i agree I and mean, a perfect example of this is his heads series a collection of portraits Mostly close friends. Yeah, close friends. And his longtime muse, Stella Olive West. Right. But these aren't just likenesses. They're almost like excavations of the human soul, I would say. Trying to get to the core of who they are. Yeah. You look at his 1965 portrait of Estella, the way the paint's applied. Mm -hmm. It's as if he's digging into her essence, trying to unearth something profound something beyond the surface, right. the thick impasto, scraping back and reworking the paint. Always pushing, always searching. It's all about revealing the resilience of the human spirit, this ability to endure. To carry on no matter what. In the face of unimaginable hardship. Exactly. He once said, I feel there is no grander entity than the individual human being. Oh, that's a great quote. And that really gets to the heart of his work, I think. It does. He was fascinated by the complexity of individual experience. Yes. The stories etched onto our faces, you know, the weight we all carry. Absolutely. And what's so fascinating is how Auerbach pushes the boundaries of realism. He really does. It's not just about capturing a likeness. It's about conveying their inner world, that psychological depth. Right. We call this psychological realism. And notice how he uses color, for example. Okay. Those dark, earthy tones. They're okay. not just descriptive. They evoke a mood a feeling of gravity, yeah. even a hint of oppression, you know? Oh, I see that. And the way he builds up the paint, it's like he's physically grappling with their essence, trying to capture not just their appearance, but the weight of their being. 
Wow, yeah. And think about the historical context here. Yeah. Auerbach's working in the shadow of the Holocaust, right. an event that attempted to erase individual identity, to reduce human beings to just statistics. Yeah. And here he is focusing on the individual, celebrating the uniqueness of each face, each life. It's almost like a rebellion against that dehumanization. It is a powerful statement about the importance of human connection, of recognizing the inherent value of every person. Right. And the Heads series, especially the portraits of Estella, they take on an even deeper meaning. Yeah, they do. They become explorations of intimacy, of connection forged in the face of loss and hardship. Yeah, that makes sense. It's powerful stuff. It is, and it's remarkable that despite that darkness, the emotional weight, mm -hmm. Auerbach achieved tremendous success in the art world. He did. His paintings fetched millions. He became a leading figure in British art. Yeah. But here's the thing. The fame and fortune, it didn't change him. No, he stayed true to himself. He did. He remained grounded, dedicated to his craft, working tirelessly in his London studio. Always refining his technique. Constantly, yeah. He would often spend months, even years, on a single painting. Wow, that's dedication. Scraping down, repainting, relentlessly pursuing his vision. Amazing. He was a true master, never satisfied with easy answers. Always pushing himself further. Always. Our backstory, it's a testament to the power of artistic integrity. He navigated that tricky balance between artistic vision and commercial success without compromising his values. It's not easy to do. It's not. He never chased trends or sought easy popularity. Hmm. His dedication to his craft, that unwavering pursuit of truth and depth in his work, yes. that's what earned him the recognition he deserved. And it's a great lesson for all of us. It is. To stay true to ourselves, to our passions. Keep striving for excellence, yeah. even when the world throws its distractions our way. Exactly. Auerbach, he never stopped evolving, exploring new ways to capture the human experience. That's inspiring. And he leaves behind a legacy that transcends the art world. I think so too. Reminding us of the power of art to connect us, to challenge us, mm -hmm. to reveal the beauty and resilience of the human spirit, even in the face of profound darkness. Beautifully said. Frank Auerbach's impact on British art is undeniable. Absolutely. And his paintings continue to resonate with viewers. They really do. Prompting reflection on memory, survival, and the human condition. So much to unpack in his work. And as you encounter his work, I want you to consider this. Okay. How does understanding Auerbach's personal journey, his unique artistic choices, mm -hmm. how does that deepen your appreciation? Yeah. What new insights into the human experience right. can you glean from these powerful and evocative canvases? It's a question worth pondering. It is, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Frank Auerbach, what an artist. What a legacy. All right, well, that's our deep dive into the world of Frank Auerbach. Great discussion. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Until next time. Take care. Bye.